Okay. Good morning, everyone. How are you? Hi, I'm Ben. Good to meet you. Thanks for coming out today. First off, again, thanks to all of you for coming to listen to me today. And thank you to Condé Nast Traveller, the organisers, for having me on stage. I've always admired their publication, so this is a real honour for me. So today I'm going to obviously talk about the Maldives, which has been on the schedule. Um, I'm also an expert in other island destinations, so at the end I'm going to talk about some alternatives and different options, but primarily it will be the Maldives. So I'm going to get to an agenda in a minute so you know what's, what's coming up and what to expect. First off, who am I? So I'm Benjamin Bryant. I run Bryant Media Group, which is a video production and marketing company. So we work with some of the world's biggest uh, and best luxury hotel groups and tourism boards. And we produce films, video, social media assets and content for them to use across their channels. And we also promote it on our own social media platforms, which leads me to the Benjamin Bryant area, which is, let's just say I have a following on social media and we promote material videos from our client projects on those platforms. So this is just a bit of me behind the scenes. So lots of what you'll see today is quite polished. It's, it's sort of finished videos and photography. But this is behind the scenes, kind of lugging the camera bag around in 35 degree heat and flying the drone off of, off of uh, boats and things like that. So I specialize in aerial photography, which is really where, really where I kind of got my name because when I started flying drones, they were very new. It was about six years ago. So the aerial shots of these destinations hadn't really been seen apart from helicopters. So that's where um, lots of my videos were, became quite popular. So I have a YouTube channel, which will be linked at the end. Here I give guided room and resort tours of all the places I've stayed. So I'll literally be talking to camera, showing you the, the inside and outsides of the resort. I've done this because wherever I've been, I've felt that especially in luxury travel, everything has got a real gloss to it. You see the magazines and the photos and it all looks amazing. So where do you choose and how do you differentiate? So whenever I've been somewhere filming, I've thought let's do a talking to camera video where I'm literally walking you around the room, a wide angle, nowhere to hide, showing you what the beds look like, showing you, you know, what toiletries you get, what the view is like. Um, is the view obstructed by a sea defence or by a pillar or is it actually an open view of the sea which is what you would have purchased. So those are all on my YouTube channel and then I have LinkedIn, Instagram was my big platform for short form video and TikTok is a new platform. It's growing, it's growing really fast and I've had a few million views on some of these videos but it depends on the market and the category. I find in luxury travel it's more about information and education you don't the short form videos are good but they're so short they're so they're built to kind of for that very short attention span so they do have the part to play but what I tried to do is kind of give that more educational long form content so these are some of the hotels resorts and destinations that I filmed in so on the left is the list of the Maldives I've been lucky enough to go to 25 different resorts and film at them all so yeah, very privileged and you can all hate me and I don't like telling people that generally because, uh, <laughs> but I work very hard when I'm there. I can promise you that. I'm slogging away, filming the whole time. Um, and then Mauritius, Seychelles, Cook Islands and some of the others and worked with most of the, the large hotel groups. So I kind of understand the difference between a big international hotel chain and a small boutique, you know, chain that might have one or two res uh, resorts and are very specialised. Okay, so that's enough about me. So this is the agenda for today. You can read it for yourselves, but basically I'm gonna talk through the geography of the Maldives. So I'm gonna talk about the best times to go, how to choose a resort, what you get when you're there. Uh, the question always comes up, will I get bored with just sitting on a beach the whole time? I'm sure some of you have <laughs> said that to each other. Um, so it depends who you are and what you like doing, but yeah, there, there is plenty to do. So hopefully, some of this will be helpful for you if you haven't been before and if you're considering going. Yes, let's, let's get into some of it. So the geography of the Maldives, it's called the Republic of the Maldives. It's uh, an archipelago of 26 atolls. So it's almost like a double bracelet chain of atolls. So an atoll is, is a collection of islands, originally volcanic, I believe, in formation. And it has little mini islands around the outside of each atoll. And then in the middle, you have a, a lagoon and it's all protected by a coral reef. 
And the Maldives is 26 combinations or a string of 26 of these islands. Um, it's in the Indian Ocean, just southwest of India and Sri Lanka. The southern side of it is right on the equator. So it's a very tropical climate. Uh, it's quite, quite large in terms of the, the size of it. Probably take an hour and a half maybe to fly across from south to north, roughly, depending on your, your plane. Um, so there is a bit of a variation in climate, but it's pretty much tropical. So um, there's different seasons, dry season, wet season. Um, so that depends. It makes a, a difference on when you go. And then the big thing that always comes up is the average height above sea level. So 1.5 to 2 meters. So it literally is, it's just islands. They're, they're only as tall as like the tallest palm tree, really. There's no relief. There's no mountains, hills or anything. It's not like Mauritius, which has a mountain range in the middle, or the Seychelles, which is also fit. not mountainous, but it's got rock formations. The Maldives is just flat islands, like you will see in a second. So this is the map of those atolls that I explained. So these are the individual little atolls, and there's kind of a chain of them connected. Uh, there's deeper sea between each of them, and the transportation methods are different, which I'll also go into later but Marley is the international airport. So if you're staying in an atoll around Marley, you can get a speedboat up to about an hour. Whereas if you're going further afield, you'd have to be flying. So that's either by seaplane, which is amazing and the whole experience in itself, or it's by domestic flight, which is a bit com more comfortable. Some people feel safer, but then you'd get a speedboat at the end of your domestic flight. It's like flying Ryanair to, to Ireland or something like that, you know, to the Silly Isles in a prop plane. It's that kind of idea. So here are just a few images of mine. So all the images in here, 99% are mine, a few that are not of the resorts I've been to, but all of these are, are shot by me. I'm literally in the villa there, right on the end, um, flying the drone. So this gives you a good idea of what an individual island might look like. So we have the main body of the island there, and then the coral reef is this edge here, and that will actually be a very deep drop off underwater down to the lower ocean below. Over here is coral reef, so this is very shallow. You can snorkel along here and it's amazing. That's where all the fish would generally live. So this island has its own house reef, it's called. So it's like its own reef that you can swim to from the villas. They don't all have this available. And then these are literally floating water villas that they've placed right in the middle of the ocean and there's the inner lagoon here. So you'll hear lagoon talked about a lot when you hear people talk about the Maldives. It's generally that area of shallow water which has got sand underneath it and it reflects that brilliant blue colour from the sky if it's a blue day. And you really notice it. If it's a clear blue day the lagoon literally pops and it's, it's amazing. When it's a cloudy day you don't quite get that effect so um, most days are, are sunny out there. And these are a few other shots, so that's just me on, on, an, on a sandbank in the middle of nowhere. The boat dropped me off that you can just see in the top right corner there to do these shots. So that's the kind of beauty that you have in these atolls. You could, though, and you can get taken these sandbanks for excursions. So being on one of those is, is a once in a lifetime experience. It really is, yeah, you feel so connected with nature. Um, this is a shot just from the aeroplane window. So this would be, I think, probably the domestic flight that I got. And here you can see one of these atolls outlined there with the different islands around the edge. So that gives you a kind of a wider angle. And then this is a resort that has had an island which has had a resort built on it. So the Maldives has, which is quite unique to the Maldives, is one island, one resort concept, which is their big tourism push. So when you go there, you don't, go to the island and then you go off to your hotel on the main Maldives island. You actually go to a separate island and your resort is the only hotel or resort on that island. So you're only there with people who work there and people who are also staying there. So that's very different about the Maldives and that's what makes it quite special because you have this whole island to yourself, not completely, but you can walk around it, you can walk around it at midnight if you want and look at and stargaze. You can wake up at 5 a.m. and be the first person on the beach. You have direct access to the beach as well, which is very different. Um, yeah, it's, it's a very special kind of environment and experience. So this is another shot of that sandbank I was talking about. 
and here this gives you an idea of the sort of natural beauty of some of the islands. This is fairly untouched apart from the jetty there, but you'll see it's got thick vegetation, got palm trees, sort of banyan trees, uh, special um, bushes and, and shrubs that you get in these sort of destinations. So yeah, it's got natural beauty and it's got thick vegetation. Some islands are like this and others are a bit more man-made, which we can go into later. So it depends what you're looking for as well. This is obviously a man-made structure jutting out into the ocean, but it's the combination of nature meets kind of man-made um, architecture is, is quite amazing in a way. And this shot really is, is mainly to show all of these individual coral heads, they call them, so these outcrops of coral here. They can all be got to by boat. You can dive and swim and snorkel around them. And it's, it's beautiful. There's not really anywhere quite like this in the world. So that's just another example of a, of a resort. There's different types of resort that you can, you can get. And this is one of the examples of a resort that's got a very natural island. So the, the, uh, the water villas are not natural, but the island itself is, is very well established, let's say. So, it's got some large trees on it. Walking around this island at night was really nice. There's, there's no sea defences needed, because you'll see that some islands have sea defences, which stop the sand migrating around or, or being washed away from the ocean. And because they do have this very low-lying land, and the, the problem with um, global warming and, and the sea level rise as well, they do have to protect their sand and pump the sand to different places around the island. So. Um, However, an island like this, which is very well established in its own right, will have an almost self, self kind of preserving nature to it, where the sand gets moved around evenly throughout the year, and the beach almost migrates from side to side, strangely, so it'll be thicker and deeper one side in, in one part of the year, and then come six months later, and the sand will have moved itself around to the other side. So it's really interesting to see that environment and ecosystem at, at work. And here was just another shot of that kind of pristine beach that you could expect there. This was actually an island. It wasn't naturally a very, uh, an island with a lots of vegetation. So what they've done here is kind of almost convert a sandbank to a resort island. Um, and it's very modern architecture, which is something else I'm going to talk about when you select your, your resort. OK, so that's the geography of the Maldives done. So. Now, best time to visit. So like I said, there's two seasons. There's a dry season and a monsoon season. So the dry season is obviously the nicest season. It's driest, it's most sun. Um, that runs from October, probably more November through till April, with the very peak being the, the festive months. So January, February, and into March actually is probably peak and high season. So you'll get the best weather. Guarantee, not guaranteed dryness, but as, as close as you can get. Lots of sunny days, but also you'll pay the prices of, of high season. So you see the prices rise as you come, especially January and February. So if you're flexible with the weather and you don't mind taking a risk, if you go perhaps in the shoulder seasons from April, sort of March, April, or then not, uh, October, November, you'll pay slightly less and you'll get potentially changeable weather, but you may well still be fine. So the off season, the monsoon season, you, you can still go then. So I also put bookings through and do bespoke packages for clients. And I've had a few go off season and they've been quite lucky with the weather. There's other benefits in terms of some of the wildlife and marine life is, is a lot more active in the monsoon season. So things like manta rays, whale sharks, you know, there's certain times of years to see them. And that, and that can well be often the off-season. So a lot of divers will go out in the off-season to dive and snorkel. Just an example of a sunny day. So that's how sunny and beautiful it can be. There are some clouds in the sky there. However, this now is, you can see there's a big thunderstorm brewing on the left there. Probably 10 minutes after this got filmed, it did hammer down and we got to get back on the boat. And it was, you know, it was real tropical monsoon, like you're in a, you know, a tropical storm effectively. So. It's quite fun, it comes and goes. I'm sure most of you have been to destinations where you get tropical weather, so you're probably aware of it. So it's quite nice sometimes to break up the extreme heat with a, with a nice shower. 
And here is an even more perfect day than the, the shot before last, where you just see the, the solid blue sky. The horizon is crystal clear as well. So you can just see that solid line. It's not, not hazy at all. Lots of days in the high season will be like this. And I often advise people, if you're going to go to the Maldives and you're going to spend X amount of thousands or tens of thousands to go, and you might not go back, I'd spend the little extra to go in high season because you're guaranteed to get that full experience of what the Maldives is about. And for me, a lot of it is just that visual, just seeing the, these blue oceans that you, you don't see anywhere else really in the world apart from maybe Bahamas or somewhere. Seeing them every day when you're eating breakfast and when you're walking around the resort and outside of your villa is just, you can't beat it. And it's, yeah, it's, it's really, really great. Okay, so now transfers. Yeah, so like I said before, because it's, it's an atoll, your international flight will come into the main hub, which is in Marley, which is the capital city. And from there, you will then take a transfer to your hotel. So in the Maldives, a transfer is either a seaplane, a speedboat, or a domestic flight plus a speedboat at the end. So by far the best I think for me is the seaplane. So this will take off, first off the, the seaplane terminal is, is an incredible place to be. You turn up there and it's like being at a taxi rank in um, you know, your train station where the taxis are coming and going, but they're all, they're all seaplanes and they're, they're jetties and there's two or three jetties and the seaplanes are coming in, they're going out, loading luggage on, um, the pilots are all in flip flops and shades on and they look like they're just chilling out on the side and then suddenly they're up and they're in the cockpit and you're two meters from them and they're flying the airplane, they kick the flip-flops off and they're just flying it barefoot. So <laughs> I think for the fact of all those, all those factors and then when you're in the air, it's the best sightseeing plane ride you'll ever, you'll ever have. It can cost up to what, four or $500 return per person. So it is, it is pricier than the speedboat, but the speedboat can still be a couple of hundred dollars so you know you're going to be spending on on the transfer in some way but then when you're in the air they fly quite low so you have this elevated view but still you're not above the clouds at all you're quite low and you're zooming over all of these atolls and islands and and sandbanks and you can really get a great view of it so yeah that's one option of the transfer another one would be a luxury speedboat which is which is also great so you turn up at the airport again Instead of having um, going to the seaplane transfer terminal, you'll just come out the back. It's so slick. The service there is great as well. The person from your resort will, pick, will meet you there, take your baggage off you, and then just whisk you away onto one of the speed boats. So they'll have normally drinks, cold towels, some refreshments. Um, you know, usually quite plush inside. And then you would get your speedboat transfer. So speedboats generally are the islands that are closest to the international airport so they're within reach of a, an hour an hour yeah 45 minutes to an hour speedboat those would be the resorts that you'd get a speedboat for so some people i understand are probably potentially scared of going on a seaplane you know floating above the water in this is, is a good plane but they feel quite raw if you know what i mean you're like you're really in a plane and yeah you feel it so if you're unsure about flying it's either a, it's either a good reason to get over that fear or you might want to avoid it but it's exhilarating so if you don't want to do the seaplane then speedboat is your best option but then that affects which resorts you'll be looking at so you have to look at resorts in one of the two closer atolls to the international airport so yeah um, anywhere further afield you'll be looking at a, a seaplane there are some very southerly um, atolls right on the equator where the, speed, uh, the seaplane can't quite reach. So for those, you would be getting on a domestic flight. Uh, so like the equivalent, like I said, of a Ryanair or a small propeller plane and fly to a local airport down south and then your, uh, they would send a speedboat to pick you up and it might be five minutes, 10 minutes to the actual resort. So I know that's a lot about transfers, but it is, it's a big part of it. And also when you book, if you're booking direct with the hotel um, or Expedia or booking.com, often they hide the cost of the transfers. So you'll get to the end and then suddenly they'll say, okay, $500 per person for the transfer. So you're suddenly spending another grand on just getting there. 
So, you know, it, you want to have that included or some agents will include that up front, which I always tend to try and do um, so that people don't get that surprise. So this, again, is another seaplane. This is Cheval Blanc, which is the resort owned by Louis Vuitton um, Hotel Management, so LVMH, um, Murray, Louis Vuitton, Murray Hennessy. Um, so this is the Louis Vuitton Maldives resort, basically, and it's, it's out of this world. They have their own private seaplane, which a few of the resorts do have. So it's branded in their colors. You can hire the entire seaplane if you want, which is thousands, um, or you can have the private seaplane, which is, again, probably a couple of thousand, or you can go on the seaplanes operated by one of the two um, standard carriers, which would be Manta, Ray, uh, Manta Air, which is this blue one here, um, or Trans Maldivian Airways, which is the, the white and red aircraft. This, again, was another example of one of the branded speedboats. This resort here is only 15 minutes from the international airport. So if you want it nice and easy, you want to just land, you've done an overnight flight perhaps from London, and you just want 10 or 20 minutes speedboat, then you get one of the closer islands to the international airport. The only flip side of that is that you might see more, you will see more air traffic, and you'll probably see more uh, boat traffic on the seas as well. So you, you've got to kind of weigh these things up, and that's why you know getting some good advice and taking your time before booking is, is advisable and it, and it does pay off because a lot of people go there and they, they go there blind and then they, they realize that their resort is looking you know, at an ugly view or it's near to a lot of international air travel. If you really want that you know, Robinson Crusoe escapism, I would go quite far down south or quite far up north um, because there's just less traffic, there's just less going on. Um, it's quieter. The big thing is the oceans are cleaner as well. So the, the coral is healthier. You have more fish as a result. So, yeah, it just feels more remote. Uh, some of them literally feel like you're in the middle of nowhere. Others feel like you can see there's other resorts in the distance and at night you see them twinkling, which can be interesting, can be fun. Some people like that. So it really depends. And yes, just another shot of how the seaplanes literally pull up to the island. So it's a very cool experience. Whenever you arrive in a seaplane and on a boat, the staff of the island will all come out to meet you as well. So again, the Maldives is really known for its service. They're award winning. They have won all sorts of awards for the best resorts in the world, top luxury resorts in the world, um, and the service they won lots of awards for year after year and it is, it is just another level above the only closest I've seen probably is Mauritius in terms of service but the Maldives it's from the moment you land they take your bags they're all they're all smart and branded and but also relaxed and, and chilled it's not kind of stuffy and then everything just happens it's just slick um, obviously different resort and hotel providers and operators are, are different some are better than others but yeah all the big brands are there, so, and then all of the boutique brands are there, and some of the best resorts in the entire world are, are all clustered there. So they've even got their own private jet, um, an island up north with a private jet landing strip. So you, the, the, the celebrities and billionaires, and they don't have to go to the main um, airport. They can go to the northern airport. That's the Nunu Atoll. And then that atoll has some of the best resorts there as a result, because the rich and famous will fly in, their private jet to the atoll and then they'll just go straight to the islands. So um, yes, there's many options. Um, just another seaplane there. This is just a screenshot from one of my videos, but this is the welcome at the Intercontinental Resort. Actually, no, that's them saying goodbye. So they bring the Maldivian drummer out, they're drumming, there's a procession leading you out to the boat. Even if it's just two of you leaving, they make a whole big hoo-ha for everyone so they wave you off until you literally can't see them but you can see them all standing there <laughs> still waving <laughs> so yeah it's great um so that is getting there so we've covered some of this choosing the best resort for you and i'm just aware of time so i'm just going to rattle through this a lot of that was covered with the location of your resort and what transfers you want to get so first off you need to work that out it always comes down to budget as well um, so you need to work out roughly what budget you want 
or would be comfortable to spend. And then that will influence whether, um, how far away you go, what standard of resort you pick, obviously, um, what type of transfers you do, um, and what board basis you're going to go on. And it is also affected by who you are and who you're taking. So if you're a honeymooner, you're going to book something different from a multi-generational family. So it, it also depends on, on that point. Do you want an island where there's literally 30 villas, one restaurant, and no one sees anyone the whole time because everyone's in their own villas, which does happen, and there are, there are resorts like that? Or do you want a resort that's got 11 restaurants and um, an activities park and a, and a water inflatable park and stuff for the kids and you know a cinema and all that stuff which is also available um so yeah you kind of got to work with those things out but i would say it's actually a great place for families and multi-generational travel because you do have this villa concept as well so everyone has their own villa um and everyone generally has their own swimming pool or access to the beach so you can be there as a family not have to live you know under each other's you know, next, next to each other, like under the same roof, but you can meet up for dinners and see each other every day, but you can go off to your own, to your own villa, which I think is really nice. I've got brothers and sisters and they've got kids and I've got baby now and parents and, you know, so it's nice to be with them, but it's not nice to be with them all the time, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Depends how close your family is. Um, sorry, there was a few other things that might affect your choice, how much uh, scuba diving or snorkeling you want to do. If you want to do a lot, you would pick one of the resorts in the Bar Atoll or the Ra Atoll. Generally, there's a UNESCO Biosphere Resort uh, Reserve um, in the Bar Atoll, I think. And there's a place called Hanafaru Bay, which is world famous with divers for being the best place to dive in the world, pretty much. There might be two or three other places that compare, but it's, it's very up there is the best. So if that's what you're interested in, diving, you would probably go to a dive-orientated resort that's got great scuba facilities and um, dive boats that are going out every day. Um, they all do snorkeling, so you can snorkel at every resort. Some you can snorkel by yourself, some you have to get guided snorkeling. Um, and then you've got to look at luxury level as well. So there's everything from ultra luxury, like the best of the best, down to there is budget so there's guest houses you can get for a couple hundred pounds i'm guessing as you're at the luxury travel fair you're probably not going to be going to the guest houses necessarily but you can mix things up you can stay in your five star for five nights and then you can go to you know a different type of resort for five nights so yeah there's lots you can do and then also modern and traditional so this is quite a big point i think i i've i like a bit of of, of both of the styles but you know the modern contemporary is really nice there because it's lots of whites and blues and clean lines and crisp architecture there is traditional which would be more more the sort of dark wood like you might be used to in say Bora Bora um, or the um, South Pacific Islands you know thatched roofs dark um, flooring and you'll find that by looking at photos and videos but each resort is different some are quite old resorts as well and others are quite modern so a few of the modern resorts are using, you know, high-end interior designers and architect um, ar architecture, and they, they just look like art galleries. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to flick through a few different um, images now. So we've got 15 minutes, so I'm going to rattle through this and allow some time for questions. So these are overwater villas. Um, this is an example of that really contemporary, almost brutalist architecture. A lot of this was concrete. Some people love this. On social media, this, this video went really, really sort of viral because it is so impactful, because it's the white and the black and the contrast is high. But some people hate this. So it's really down to you. This is a little bit more traditional, but this is a brand new resort that visited. This is the last one I went to, actually. Um, and it's got that mixture between traditional, but it's also modern and it's, it's brand new as well. Uh, this, again, a different style of curved villas. You've also got to think when you actually pick a villa, if you're on one of these or here, you can see across into the other person's decking, which for me isn't great because you don't get that privacy. Whereas if you were on the outside of this curve, you can't see anyone and no one can see you. So there's little, really little like details that you wouldn't have a clue, but you can request a specific room if you know that information. So again, it's worth getting good advice because it changes your whole holiday if you've got your neighbors looking in on you or if you haven't and you're looking out onto nothing. Uh, here is a bit of a marriage between traditional and contemporary. 
So this is a dining area with sandbags that look like stones and rocks on the beach, uh, thatched roof here, and then you've got contemporary villas. Uh, again, another very contemporary look here. And this resort is all about kind of fun colour. So each one of those water villas along that side, is, the colours change slightly. So you've got you know, orange, yellow, reds, blues. They're also about fun. They're aimed at groups. So they want to get lots of groups coming. They've got a nightclub at this resort as well. So it's all about like fun groups. Um, yeah, people going away with friends and stuff. So whereas this is very like Robinson Crusoe. It's just, you can just about see one or two beach fillers. That whole strip there has got beach fillers all the way along, but you, you can't see them. Um, because they're hidden, basically. So, yeah, there's lots of different styles. This here, the roof here, you know, not many people are going to see the roof unless they're flying drones like me, but when you do fly a drone, you notice all of these things because you can see everything. So, uh, and this is an example of one of the sort of ultra luxury resorts. This is a special type of volcanic stone that's really rare that they use to line all the bottom of the pools. And, you know, the finish on, on these sort of resorts is amazing, um, the quality. This is a resort that's more focused towards snorkeling, like grab your snorkel, grab your rubber ring, jump outside, straight in the water. One of the beauties of it is that you can be in the water within 10 steps. That this could be the bedroom and the end of the stage there is the step down into the water. So I always try and wake up and before I do anything, I literally just get up, swimming shorts on and then I'm straight in the water. And then, yeah, that, you can't do that in many places um, safely and you can do that at night as well. We probably shouldn't, but you can. <laughs> um, this, this is the nightclub, overwater nightclub with a glass floor and, a, and a, the biggest disco ball in the, I think in like the whole of the Indian Ocean. So this is the standard Maldives, is the, is the hotel chain. They're like a Miami chain. So they're very, you know, funky and cool and that's their kind of thing. Um, and here you just got, to, just to show the combination of water villas, in a straight line, water villas up there in like a curved line, and then beach villas along here, main pool over there. This is a restaurant. So you've got a whole load of different things going on in one place. That's actually the spa building there. So over water spas where you're looking down, you know, potentially through a glass floor into the sea while you're getting your massage. Okay, so over water villas. I'm just going to talk about the two different categories. This is quite important. So you can stay in an over water villa, which is the, the classic Maldives. Villa. This is part Kayat Hadaha in the Maldives. These were beautiful villas, really architectural, really stylish. They've each got a little tree on them. Um, over water is great if you want access to the water. You want that view across the ocean. Uh, you want to feel like you're in, you know, somewhere like the Maldives, and you want to be able to swim regularly and jump in whenever you want. That freedom. It is great at night time, though. You can hear the waves a bit, so some people like that, some people don't. If you have a storm come in, it's a little bit, you know, uh, off-putting, um, but they're great. You know, that's the ones we saw earlier. These, the style is very dated now, it's, and it's also got a kind of a, an Asian influence to it, but they are very impactful pillars. They're in the middle of, middle of nowhere, basically. Very modern here. They've got that sail design to them. So you can, there's a whole load of different varieties and, and choices to choose from. Even within the same resort, you can have, these are their honeymoon villas, and then these are their standard villas there. And then beach villa. So beach villas are, I, I really like a beach villa as well because they feel very grounded. So they're often quieter because they're surrounded by the vegetation. You can walk, you're on the beach, you can walk straight out to your own little bit of beach. It's different from the overwater villas because you're going straight into the lagoon, normally a fair distance out. Normally you can stand in the water villas, but sometimes the water's a bit deeper. Um, so yeah, these are examples of beach villas you're literally there that's me there you can see it's not far to the sea at all so if you're a beachy type person you want to walk around the beach at night and, and chill out on your you know, lounges on the beach um, in your little private garden then beach villa could be a good option um, and what you can do is a split stay so you can if you're going say for 10 days do five day water villa five day beach villa which is it's actually quite good it feels like you've done two holidays uh, and these are lagoon villas. So they've got a lagoon behind them and they've got water in front of them and they're two-story. So these are the intercontinental. There's quite a new concept when, when I filmed there um, about these villas. 
So yeah, they got a bit of both and they got that, that raised level is really quite nice because you get great views um, out across the sea. I think choosing your villa is, is often a, a very big part of it. So now multi, this is just another part of villas, multi room and residence and private islands. So this villa here has got like three bedrooms to it. You can see behind here. Uh, you could go with a whole family. You can also rent a whole private island on the resort or around uh, on, on the resort's complex somewhere where you would literally be the only people. So there's some islands now which have got two or three villas and you have the whole island. So like Kate and Will, um, you know, uh, the now Prince William, they went to one of the resorts and they had an entire um, private island at the resort. So they were the only ones there. So yeah. That was actually that island there, that exact island. So this is Cheval Blanc again. Uh, luxury yachts. This island's a spa island. So yeah, if you're going with families, there's lots of options to be, again, close, but, but not too close. This is a two-bed villa. So you each have your individual villa, but you've got the shared pool. So yeah, it's great for families. This one is a three-bed villa. So there's, a, there's a, a villa there all on its own, and this has two bedrooms in it, and it's double story. Okay, cool. So I'm speeding up a bit because I'm running a little bit short on time and I want to do some questions. So uh, I'm just going to flick through some photos and narrate them through quickly. So this is another overwater villa, three bedroom here with all its own bar. It's got, this is its own bar and it's got its own pool and everything. Uh, I've got my best ultra luxury resorts there if you want to see. These are regarded by many travel agents and Maldives experts such as myself as the best six resorts so these are the tier one ultra luxury unbeatable you will never be disappointed booking one of these they're all slightly different i'm going to show you some photos coming up shortly some are part of large international groups such as waldorf astoria and and one and only and then we have more niche and more like unique local groups and some independents as well so if you have a question in terms of which one might be best for you and, and the actual the details on the difference of them please do get in touch my details are below they're at the end of this presentation as well you can drop me a message a comment or a direct email as well which you can find on my youtube channel or my websites but head to the end of the video or the description below and you can get in touch. So first off, I'm going to show you Cheval Blanc. Now these are all my images of Cheval Blanc as I was lucky enough to visit a couple of years ago. As you can see, these villas are stunning. Their design, the architecture, the fit out inside, the interior design, it's all absolutely stunning. Louis Vuitton Hotel Management run this resort. There's a few throughout the world, which they call their Maisons. But this is one of the best examples. As you can see there, everything is done amazingly well. If you're looking for the highest standards of luxury, then this could be the resort for you. It's got a bit of a European feel, almost like you're in the south of France. Coming up, you'll see the, the dedicated spa island straight ahead there. And to the right is the private island, which you can hire the whole thing. That's where Prince William and Kate stayed. I think for their honeymoon or at least for one of their holidays. So this is a popular resort with celebrities, royalty, billionaires and ultra high net worth individuals. So do get in touch about that. I've been there, I've stayed, I know exactly everything you might need to know about that resort. So next up, we're going to move on to speak about Suniva Jani. So Suniva Jani is one of those resorts that you may well recognise. It's got that curved jetty that runs all the way between the overwater villas it's got really recognizable villas and is known for its sustainability as well as its incredible style it's quite modern at the same time as being very rustic as you can see from this interior shot here of one of the water villas it's an incredible place it's had some absolutely amazing reviews food is amazing location is stunning as you can see they've got sunroofs that open up on these overwater villas so you can lie in bed there and look out to the stars at night or the blue sky in the daytime and there you go that's an uh, incredible shot of the overwater villas they've got various room types they've got lots of large categories for families and groups and it's in the Nunu Atoll which is the same atoll 
as Cheval Blanc and a few other resorts in this list. So yeah, an incredible resort for sure. Next on the list is Joali Maldives. So Joali's a fairly newcomer to the Maldives resort collection and it's been doing really well. The quality of the resort is top notch. The interiors, as you can see there, are jaw dropping, just beautifully done. The architecture is also incredible and these spaces look beautiful to walk through and to live in and enjoy. So Joali Maldives calls itself an art immersive luxury island resort. It's nestled in the Ra Atoll, which is really well known for its snorkeling and its sea life. So you can enjoy lots of that here. The overwater villas are beautiful. The beach villas here, as you can see, are set within this lush vegetation with large palm trees. Look at those beautiful roofs as well and the way the jetty curves off down into the ocean so yeah absolutely beautiful you won't be disappointed here for sure you get really good value for money you get a lot of space as well so if you're interested again please let me know and i can help advise you further on joali maldives another top pick is one and only Rithi ra so one and only is known throughout the world as a amazing resort group they've got beautiful resorts and hotels throughout the entire world this is their Maldives offering and as you can see from these images it's stunning so one and only is fairly close to the international airport in the Maldives so it's only a speed boat away or it's actually a luxury yacht that picks you up from the airport so that's got its benefits in terms of a short transfer and very easy transition from your international flight to your holiday the island is very large as well. There's so much space, as you can see in this image, really thick vegetation, a really well established island. And it was one of the first luxury islands in the entire Maldives. And it really was a trailblazer for this kind of luxury island living and luxury island lifestyle. So one and only a fantastic choice, a quiet island, loads of space, good for families, good for groups. And I'm sure you will enjoy Wardorf Astoria Maldives is again another well-known international hotel group and this is a fantastic Maldivian offering from them. As you can see, the island is very large. There's lots to do here. There's a huge number of restaurants and things to see and places to go. It takes a long time to even travel across the island and there's a lot of variation in room and villa categories. So this could work for couples. It could work really well for families. There's a private island here as well, which can host 12 to 20 guests across three villas. So it's humongous and you can have the whole thing to yourself the interiors the fit out the architecture is all beautiful the main pool there as you can see is a thing to behold there's interior shots here looking out of one of the water villas with some hammocks there and just quality throughout the yeah the quality the style and the design here is second to none so Waldorf Astoria, known throughout the world as being top quality and the Maldives is no exception to that whatsoever. These water villas here just look like the dream. So yes, Waldorf Astoria, again, a very well-deserved place in this top ultra luxury resort listing. The final resort on this ultra luxury list of mine is Velar Private Island. So Velar has a almost mythical status amongst Maldivian resorts. It's the home of many celebrities, royal families and billionaires who have traveled to the Maldives and decided to stay here. They have absolutely stunning and beautiful accommodation, overwater villas, beach villas, private villas, and you can actually hire the entire island itself as one huge private island for your travels, if, uh, if that's your inclination. So Again, with all of these resorts, the fit out is great, the quality is great, the interiors, the food and the restaurants on offer is amazing. Here they have special things such as tennis pros come and teach on the island. They do lots of special initiatives. There's a golf course on the island as well, which is one of the only go golf courses in the Maldives. So if that's your thing, then this is potentially the island for you. And they've got a huge amount of other very unique experiences, which kind of give it this ultimate island escape status. 
I just love the, the beauty of it, as you can see there, the way it's designed and styled is fantastic, as are all of the resorts in this top five list. You wouldn't be disappointed with any of them. They'll be hard to choose from, but there'll be something for everyone, and it may well come down to location and destination and how you know how you get there and, and what your kind of style is so please do get in touch again about these top five listings and i'll i'll do my best to advise you and finally in terms of my top picks i wanted to list out the resorts that i recommend having personally stayed at so cheval blanc obviously was in the last list but whereas these are my other kind of top six resorts i would say all ultra luxury all five star and all incredible for different reasons so it was worth me putting the list here for you to continue to research and peruse and check out at your leisure for families and groups there are kids clubs as well they've all got great kids clubs um some a lot better than others and actually some are adults only so so i'm wrong there they don't all have kids clubs and some will specifically say adults only so activities, I've covered a bit of this already, but obviously there's lots of snorkeling, there's great sea life. That is a dolphin watching tour. So um, that's me at the front of the boat, and these are dolphins. There's a pod of about eight dolphins that just started flanking the boat and jumping up, and we were, me and my brother were like that far away from them, and we obviously managed to get the drone up and film it, and yeah. Uh, if you're into water sports, there's powered water sports or unpowered, so there's like jet, there's sailing boats like this, catamarans, this was us going on a uh, manta safari. So there's manta rays, they come through the Maldives at a certain time of year and it's the best place to see them. And we were lucky enough to be 45 minutes in the, in the water with about five of these manta rays. Yeah, this was a real like, um, yeah, this is a, a life highlight for me. <laughs> some have, like I said, water parks, which is not for everyone, but be great for some. Uh, there's a stingray in the sea there. That's my brother there snorkeling around we were staying in one of these villas the wildlife's everywhere there's, there's sharks there's um tropical fish other activities you can do yoga meditation aerial yoga you can cycle around the resort on your bike um, some resorts don't do this now because they had some people fall in and certain nationalities are not very good at swimming and they had a few um issues basically so now some of them are banned so yeah the brits are generally quite good swimmers but not all nationalities are um so yeah here we have Jet skis, water skis, kayaks, you know, everything really. Some islands don't offer this and they're quieter and others do. Um, music, there's music at night, local music, guitar players. They sometimes sing you onto the island, sing you off the island. Um, spa and wellness, that's a dedicated spa, overwater spa. The whole thing is a spa. Uh, they're really good on spa and wellness. So you can have your massage right by the sea. There's a bath there looking out onto the water. That's a complete spa building. So every unit in there is a treatment room or a yoga studio or the gym. So yeah, they really go all out. And doing your morning workout, looking at the ocean is great. But if you're there, I tend to like go for a swim instead or <laughs> you know do something tropical based. Board basis, this is just to, just to mention, all inclusive, half board, full board, same as anywhere really. I generally think you're kind of okay with full board. Half board can also be fine if you're not drinking much because the breakfasts are huge. Um, I've got a load of food and drink photos, which I'll have to flick through. As I'm flicking through like all the food experiences, there's live teppanyaki chefs, there's, there's, you can get any cuisine you want, basically. Some resorts are better on, on food than others, but yeah. Now I wanted to cover flights briefly. So international flights will come into the Velana International Airport in Male, which is the capital. Flights come in from, from all over the world, uh, the big carriers such as emirates qatar ba and virgin all fly to the maldives from the uk you can get direct flights with ba and virgin which is really nice to have that direct non-stopping flight and just arrive there so they all arrive into the international airport whether you stop over or not and then you'll be taken either to your seaplane terminal or straight onto your speedboat from the international airport so reaching maldives is easy it's fairly reasonable unless you're flying from the other side of the world, such as the US, then the flights are not too bad, especially if you get a nice direct flight. 
I also wanted to include a few packing and practical bits of information for you. So one is to pack light for the seaplane. There's only a 20 kilogram limit on seaplanes. Another one is sort of the vibe of the island, which is barefoot, yoga, kind of feet on the ground. You might not need fancy covered shoes. Um, and there's a lot of going to lunch and dinner in barefoot or flip flops, which is nice. So don't worry too much about the super smart attire. Toiletries, they are provided primarily on the islands, so you don't have to carry them if you don't want to, but you might obviously want to bring your own things like sunscreen and, you know, aftershave, eau de toilette, that kind of thing, perfumes. But yeah, they do provide them, but feel free to bring what you like. The power sockets are UK, which is very useful for myself and anyone traveling from the UK. So the three pronged power sockets. So if that's not you, then bring a few adapters with you. There's lots of USB chargers as well. Sun cream, ideally you can use a reef safe sun cream or an organic more natural sun cream, which is better for the coral reefs and the fish. Wi-Fi is in all islands, but it can be a bit patchy. So just beware that you're not gonna have the Wi-Fi strength that you might have at home because you are on an island. Tipping is not mandatory in the Maldives, but obviously it is appreciated very much by staff. I usually leave something for my cleaners and the people who look after my room and perhaps some people who work at the restaurant at the end of your stay. Visas you can apply for on, on site or on arrival usually you can get a visa fairly easily. There is a online form that you need to fill out these days with a photo that was after Covid so yeah make sure you check your flight information from your airline once you book your flight and they'll tell you everything you need to do but it's quite easy to get in and you can do all of that once you arrive that's if you're flying from the UK other countries will have to double check yourselves and finally religion it is a Muslim country so just be aware of the customs and traditions around that one of the big things is you can't take alcohol into the country as it's illegal apart from in resort islands so you won't be able to bring any drink in with you and if you're visiting a local island, make sure you cover up and wear appropriate attire. Another big question I get often is the sustainability and conservation credentials of the Maldives. So they're doing what they can to help the marine conservation based on the fact that they are building over water properties in the island. And there is inevitably some damage to the reefs and to the the seabed and things like that so yes there is lots they need to do and need to keep improving on but they do a lot of initiatives such as coral replanting they use solar power where they can the water processing is is usually done as naturally as they can uh, and as safely as they can they use seawater to desalinize take the salt out of it for drinking water usually they bottle that in glass bottles lots of places now which is good which links into plastic reduction as well and there's a lot of education going on and there's some resorts such as the Intercontinental which is actually partnered with the Manta Ray Trust and they're doing a lot of good work for preserving those natural animals and, and marine life from the Maldives as much as they can. So yeah, lots of good initiatives going on and some resorts are obviously a lot better than others. So please do ask me if you have any questions around that. Yes, I have five minutes. Are there any questions? Okay, we've got the microphone coming over here. Yes, hi. Hi. Um, you didn't mention the name of a lot of the villas or the resorts okay. that you showed. Yeah. Uh, it would be kind of helpful to know um, yes, sure. what they are. And also, do you have a favorite one? You must have been to a lot of them. Yeah. Um, yeah, good talk? question. Yes, I've got a website at the end and I've got social media and you can generally find all of the things on there and messaging me about them but my personal favorite there's a few there's a few different ones really so uh, a really good all-inclusive was Ozen Ozen Life Madhu which is near to Marley and it was just a great all-inclusive the Cheval Blanc was just a, a, a an amazing experience because it's Louis Vuitton's hotel so it's it's like being in a fashion boutique it was a little bit it's quite uh, western feeling it's quite European feeling which is is nice but if you go over there you know it might not be for everyone so yeah generally i've loved a lot of them most a lot of them have been amazing so yeah it's quite hard to pick a favorite um in terms of snorkeling and just feeling out there by yourself aida maldives was good and park kayak 
had a high was really nice. Felt felt quite wild. Um, I'm going to put together some sort of top top lists on my website soon and do videos about the top five for this, top five for that, because it just it depends on what you're you know what you're looking for really. Got one over here. Hi, excellent presentation. Hi. Yeah, thanks. Now, are, uh, are there any risks in uh, in, in the Maldives? Um, um, from one hand, if there's anything, uh, there was a picture of a stingray. I presume if you yeah. step on it, you have an issue, or scorpion fish, or something like that, and yeah. um, or insect-related uh, diseases. Like, is that a thing? And I'm guessing yeah. that the water is coming from desalination, so you wouldn't have water issues. Yes, issue. exactly. Good point. Yeah. So the water is desalinized, like you said. So they take salt water and they have a plant on the island where they'll take the salt out of it and clean it and filter it. Yeah, insects they're quite lucky with. So the insects are not too bad there. Um, they do spray the islands regularly, maybe once or twice a week. You'll see like a mist, which is a little, little bit off-putting, but it, and it's on, only on the island. So if you're in a beach villa, you do see it. They're basically mosquito spraying the island, which is a little bit weird. I was gonna talk about sustainability as well at the end, because it's a consideration for a lot of people. Um, the sharks that you would encounter would be reef sharks, so they'd only be that size. So they're not really dangerous. If you go out of the atoll to deeper water, you can have bigger sharks, hammerheads in certain places, but they won't be coming into like the lagoons and the safe areas. So, um, yeah, so insects, and they don't have any poisonous animals on the islands. There are some poisonous fish, like angel fish. Is it the one with the big, um, lots of like sort of feathers almost looking? But um, generally, you're yeah, there's not that many warnings that go out. They don't really invite, there's not too much, which is quite nice, yeah. The mosquitoes, I'm generally never affected with the mosquitoes when I'm there, because I think because they spray the island. And if you're in an overwater villa, you're quite far from the, from the mainland anyway, in the trees where you might get the insects. Yes. Um, is there much like local culture? I'm assuming yeah. there are local people. Yes. Are there areas where it's more authentic? Yeah. Yeah, good question, because you can go there and feel like you're just on a resort the whole time. So, yes, there are local island tours that you can do. So you go to local island, the religion's um, uh, Muslim out there, and you can go to local islands and, and experience the culture, uh, the food and the people. So they'll do day trips to those places. You can do your own trip and stay on a local island as well, which is a really good way to kind of immerse yourself. They're very good on getting local people, performers, artists to the resorts in the evenings and doing drumming shows and dancing and um, and they always do like local cuisine. There's always a curry on offer. There's always curry in the morning as well. So if you want curry for breakfast with paratha and freshly cooked naan bread and stuff, you can, you can do that. But yeah, thank you all very much. It, the time flies actually. So you can tell I, <laughs> I love talking about this subject, but yeah. Uh, thank you very much for coming and you can grab me at the end. I'll be around so if you've got any other questions. The best thing to do is probably follow me and find my website and um, keep up to date with me on there. And I'll put my contact details up on stage now at the end while we set up the next speaker. All right. Thank you very much. Thanks. Have a, have a good show and hope you enjoy it.